everyone. Hello. Kathy is Hello. newer to our office, right? You just started, was it this week or last week? I started last week. Yep. Well, welcome. Thank you. Hi, so, nice to meet you. <laughs> here. Today, um, I want to go over how to create a listing presentation in command. Um, I partnered with Nate because Nate had said, hey, I'm going to be kicking off this listing competition. So I want to show you one way to do a listing presentation. Um, that's pretty simple in command. So you can see here, I want to get to my homepage. If you're on your homepage, you just want to click this KW in the corner and that'll bring up your little tools on the side. You're going to want to go into designs and it looks like there's like a canvas and a paintbrush icon. So look for that. When you're in there, you can go ahead and click this plus sign in the bottom right hand corner. And then you actually want to hit the print icon. And what that means is, is these are the designs that you can create in command that are printable or you can download them as PDFs. So if you do your consults over Zoom, you can just put the PDF in a folder and share your screen and go over it that way as well. Um, whenever you are in this section, you just go to listings on the left-hand side and you'll go down, you'll see listing presentation. I was already in there today, so that's why it's highlighted red. And you'll actually see several templates to choose from. So you can open all of these and just kind of see which one you think feels best to you, but they're all templates that are completely 100% customizable to you and your needs. So just for the sake of it, I'm gonna use this one here. I gotta just move my little video screen. If you just click where it says use, it'll open it up. And the template pages are now loaded on the left. So you can scroll down through and see all the pages you have to choose from. Now, just to be clear, you don't have to use all of these pages. You can, again, fully customize it. So as you go through and you're like, you know what, I, the first two pages are truly template and instruction. So you don't want to add those, but you're like, I definitely like this cover page. So you just click this plus sign and now it's added to your presentation. So there's our page one. You can change the names of your clients here, you know, so maybe it's not Maria and Chris, maybe it's Joe. Or, and if you want to, you can just delete it and just put, you know, the Roberts, whatever speaks your language, however you like to talk, kind of put your own twist on it. And you can see here if when you type, if it goes over the picture, you can just click and drag and move it wherever you want to. The picture is also completely interchangeable. So maybe you happen to have their photo. Uh, maybe they had a recent listing um, that you can pull from, you can see here KWLS, you can search for a listing and then actually replace this photo with a listing photo if they had bought recently. Um, or if you go into images and you go into company, oops, they have a ton of different photos that you can choose from. Um, one that I actually like, I think is a little fun. Let's go back to company, if it will let me. Maybe not. Well, naturally it doesn't wanna refresh for me because I wanted to show you a specific photo. There we go. Um, if you go into house exteriors, scroll to the bottom. There's this photo here that has a blank for sale sign. So if I click this photo and you can see that it's highlighted and it has like the white resizable tools on it. And then I come here and I just click this arrows and circles. It actually replaces the image for you. And then I can go to my assets or add company. Let me go back up. I think the logo is under company actually. Like the arrow. Hmm. Normally the, oh, there it is, logos. 
I'm still new folks, but then you can click and drag. And if you wanted to, you could put the logo right on the sign. Or if you had your own logo, you know, sold by Beth Shank, you could put it right on the sign and kind of just add a little customization and marketing. Same thing with your picture. You can just click replace and now your photo's right there. You can type in your information. And then you just go back to template and now we look for page two. Um, the second page in this is a title page. So if you'd like to have a title page, you can add that. Then there's this page here that really just talks all about the seller's property. So you're like, yep, I want to talk about that. Maybe talk about some highlights. You know, it's a three bedroom, three bath, and you can click in here if you need to change anything. You know, maybe it's not 2,000 square feet. Maybe it's, you know, 1,000 square feet. That'd be a small house, but just for the sake of an example. Um, and then you can pull in stats here, and you'll get this information from either your walkthrough, looking at photos, um, or of course, from your analysis that you perform. You can say, you know, your home was 10% larger than the other comps that I was able to find. I like this page a lot. This is the neighborhood page. And what I think is really cool about this is if they're in a, a neighborhood, um, you can actually click this and you can include a neighborhood snapshot, which the whole benefit of that is it's going to show that you're the neighborhood expert, right? You know their micro market. And to get that, after you click on to the neighborhood image, you go into KWLS and then you're gonna go into snapshots. So you see how it says listing and then snapshots. You wanna make sure you click snapshots and then you can pick a neighborhood. So just for example, you know, Winding Hills. There we go. And when I click on where it says mechanics, oh, that's the wrong one. I don't want Mechanicsburg, I want Winding Hills. Let me click this little arrow. There we go. You can see the different images that you can choose from. And I'm gonna click on this one. And now I just have to click on the one that was already there and hit delete and it goes away. And I just move this to where that one was, resize it. And now it actually has the stats for that neighborhood. So average list price, total active, total pending, average days on market, average sold price, all right there so you can show your sellers. And then of course you'll wanna pull this information from your CMA. Um, I like this section here. It says, you know, what are buyers looking for? So you can type in there what you think a lot of the buyers are looking for in that neighborhood right now. You know, is it open concept layouts, um, updated kitchens and baths? All of this is fully customizable by just clicking and then you can, you know, backspace and then type your own language in there. One place where you can find some of this information, um, if you go to our agent portal, and you scroll down and our agent portal is just kwagentportal.com and you go to market data reports. Now this isn't gonna be neighborhood specific, but we do get county specific. And some of these stats I think would be totally fine for you to throw on that page. But if you open up our Cumberland County market data report and there's also one for Dauphin, and you scroll through here, it will show you, you know, um, active listing count, has it increased or decreased since last year, pending sales account compared to last year. And you can pull a lot of those stats for your CMA right from this report. So this is a really handy tool that we have. Um, so that way you have somewhere to pull those stats from.
Nine, there we go. Back in here. Do you have any questions so far? Okay, perfect. Then I just have to go back to templates so I can see my pages again. Then you have your comparable properties page. I think this is a great page to use for a highlight. So you don't want this page to be your complete analysis, but so that way they can have a highlight view, kind of an eagle's eye view of the comps that you used. And it's real easy. You just click on this photo, click on KWLS, go to listing. And just for example, we'll use one of my listings. You can type in any listing in the MLS. There it is. I hit select. And now I can just change this photo out with any of the listing photos that I want to. So I can just click replace and there's the front picture. And then I can just type in here, you know, the basic information about that house. That way they're kind of just having an overview of, okay, here's four comps. They're all single detached homes, just like mine. They're all ranches, just like mine. Um, here's basic information on bedrooms, baths, square footage. And you had just gone over at that point with them based the basics of what their home covered on their homepage. And now you're going to talk about the comps. If it were me, what I would do then is wherever you do your CMA. So if you do your CMA in bright, I would, um, if you print this out and take it to their house, so if you do listing presentations with them in person, I would print my CMA and place it right behind this comparable property page. So that way they have that Eagle's eye view, and then you can go into all those details and, and your price analysis. That's probably how I would do it. Um, one thing too, that I liked is some people use this listing presentation to also make a pre-listing presentation. So if you want to send your marketing information to your sellers ahead of time, you could maybe use some of these other pages. Like this one here talks about what the home selling process looks like. You could always include this in your pre-listing presentation if you wanted to to send it to them in advance. Or if you're, I like to do this all at once, I wanna to talk to them about this while I'm there going over the comps, you can also add it to your listing presentation. But just to keep those options open, you could do some of this as a pre-listing doc as well as a listing documentation. Um, there is a page in here about your app. Um, if you have your app set up, you can actually have a listing guide in your app and you can have your sellers set up on a neighborhood watch and command, um, which is another training I plan on doing. Um, but the neighborhood watch just helps them stay posted on homes that are selling as they're getting ready to sell their house in the market. Um, I used to always have my sellers set up on a home search for their neighborhood. So that way they're getting those updates on houses selling around them. So they're just as educated as I am. So that way I can say, Hey, if they're, especially when they're priced too high, right? So if they're priced too high, their home's not selling, you could be like, did you notice that your neighbor next door, whose house is exactly the same as yours sold for 10 grand less. It kind of just helps you have those conversations because you're always giving them that information. So just something to think about there. They have pages in here about marketing. And of course you can critique this to your marketing style. Um, I liked this one because it talks about, you know, a good majority of our marketing now is on the internet. Definitely still need that real estate agent. I'm prospecting every day to find buyers for my sellers and sellers for my buyers. You can talk about your yard signage. Um, you know, it's always good to check with friends or family. Maybe you do circle prospecting. You can say, you know, part of my prospecting plan for you is I'm going to call your neighborhood and I'm going to ask your neighbors, hey, do you want to choose your own neighbor? Do you know someone that you'd love to live next door to you that you can share this listing with? Um, then you can talk about maybe print and advertisements, books and magazines, just other things that help optimize their listing. 
And remember, all these pages are optional. They don't get added unless you click this plus sign. So if you're like, eh, I don't like that page at all, you don't have to use it. Um, you can keep it short and sweet. Marty Miller, he only goes to the comparable properties and then he stops. He doesn't use the rest of this. Um, then you have teams like the Dave Hook team in their booklet talks about their marketing strategy and that's how they like to do their listing presentation. So whatever fits your business is what you can use here. Um, this page talks about media plan. So here's where you could maybe discuss the specific things you're going to do. And again, you can, oh, wow, they have this thing completely customizable there, but you can upload pictures of maybe your postcards that you use. And if you go into images, I have to keep remembering, I have to scroll up. Hmm. There you go you can actually upload right here. So if you have photos of maybe some of your marketing materials saved on your computer, you can upload documents into here. So that way you can use those pictures then in your listing presentation. Strategic promotion. This is a great time if you like to do coming soon ads in Bright, you can talk about how that works and the campaigns that you might do for just listed. So if you use command, you can do just listed email campaigns to everybody in your database. Um, and you can also do a just listed campaign for social media. So you can have that scheduled to go on the day that the listing is active. So you can talk about those things there. It's in the details. I think this is a great time to talk about why our service is so valuable. Um, you know, using a real estate agent just from having a sign in the yard. That is so important. Some people think that they can just put up an easy for sale by owner sign and they're real small and it's hard to read the phone number. You know, signage is still important today, even with all the social media marketing. Um, you can talk about if you use a professional photographer, why that makes a difference. You know, first impressions happen a lot of times online. Buyers are looking online first, and if they don't like those photos that they see, oftentimes they don't schedule the showing. So I do like this page. I maybe wouldn't talk about door knocking. That's just my preference. I'm not a door knocker, um, but you could tweak this to something else that you do that you think is unique. Real experience, real expertise. Um, just remember, if you are a newer agent and you don't have a big resume, that's okay. You can use KW stats here, right? So you can talk about our office. If you need some of those stats, um, I think Nate would probably be the best contact. I'll actually ask him about that and follow up with you um, on where we can get good stats on here. But also numbers from family reunion would be great to plug in here. So, um, you know, you can talk about the fact that KW listings get 44% more showings than the average, than the other companies in Bright. You can put that stat in here. I think that's huge. And here's another page where you can talk about numbers. I think you could almost use, you know, if you don't want to use both, I would almost use this one because um, I think percentages and the way that this lays out is really eye catching to really point out KW st statistics. There is a credentials and awards page here. Um, so maybe if, if you have some awards or if you wanna talk about the KW franchise, you certainly can. Um, leading the industry, we talk about our core values, you know, win-win. If we don't feel like it's a win-win situation for everybody in the deal, um, you know, that's just not how we operate. That actually won me a listing. So I was in a very competitive um, listing situation. So, and I was very nervous. And when I got to the table, they inter the sellers interviewed me like hardcore. I've never been interviewed like this for a listing in my life. And one of the questions they asked me was, well, how do you negotiate? So if we have a buyer and they're really tough, like what's your nego negotiating strategy? And I talked about KW's win-win method. And 
after I got done with that, I thought, man, I hope they didn't take that the wrong way that like I would give away their money. But I did say about how we really like to try to have it be win-win. So that way, when everybody gets to the closing table, they're happy. With that said, I'm still going to keep your best fiduciary interests in mind, but we do like to try to meet in the middle. And oftentimes I find that that works out best for sellers because if they're working with an agent that has a really good reputation in the field and buyer's agents know, hey, Brittany's a great agent to work with. I have a good experience when I work with her. They're more apt to show my listings, right? Versus the agent who's horrible to work with. We won't name drop but you probably have one in your head that you're like, oh, I never want to work with this person again. And if you have a buyer that wants to see their home, you're, you're like, oh, maybe this house, like, did you see this one <laughs> instead? Um, and that whole conversation around, around win-win negotiating was the reason why they chose me over some other agents. So just something to think about that, that win-win is actually really important to sellers and talking about our core values can make a difference. The last couple pages um, are kind of bragging rights. So if you want to talk about some houses that you've listed before, you have the opportunity to show off your resume. Again, you can pull this by clicking on the image, going to KWLS and typing in those addresses. So you don't have to sit there and upload each picture. It'll import for you. Oops. And this page is just um, like testimonials. So if you have some reviews that were really nice, you can copy and paste them in here. And then we have the promise. I like this page. I think this is a great time for you to kind of hint about referral. So you're going to talk to them about all the things that you promise to do for them. Um, just to read one, because I know this print's really small, which might be hard for you to read. Um, but one of the promises is to treat you and your family with straightforwardness, integrity, and respect at all times. Um, so I would probably talk about a couple items on this page, and I would say something to the effect of, you know, this is my promise to you. And all I ask in return is if I deliver on my promise by by the time we get to the closing table and you really felt like I kept my word and treated you and your family with the respect that you deserve. All I ask in return is that you share me with your friends and family. And you know, you know, when they need real estate needs, you give them my name. That's all I ask in return. Um, so I think that's just a really great page. We talked about that a lot. If you've ever taken bold, um, there's a bold script in there about the promise and setting that stage of, you know, making sure that you're going to deliver awesome customer service. And in return, your customer service is going to be so amazing that they're going to want their friends and family to use you because they know that you, they can trust you with their real estate needs. And then you have this bottom line page um, where I think you can just put a nice wrap up, maybe what your personal goals are. And then you have this closing page of just basic, this is how you get in touch with me. I think this would really be a great time to set expectations on how they can contact you, when they can contact you, your hours. Um, one of the trainings that we've had at KW had talked about, you know, making sure your clients realize that, hey, when I'm in this meeting with you, I'm not taking other phone calls. With that said, you might get my voicemail a lot, right? And it's not that I'm ignoring your phone calls. It's that when I'm with my clients, I just want to make sure all of my clients feel like they're getting that one-on-one -on -one attention that they deserve. Just leave me a message and I will make sure I give you a call back, you know, within your, whatever your hour ranges and within two hours or by the end of business day, I'll be sure to give you a call back. Um, I think this is a great time to talk about those expectations. And it's always great to do that upfront because it'll make it a lot smoother for you throughout the entire transaction until you get to that closing table. So that is the listing presentation in command. I don't wanna keep you too long because I know Anthony has his MREA lead gen model training today. And I'm sure a lot of you wanna get to that. That's a good training. Um, but do you have any questions for me on what we went over so far? Nope. All right. Well, I appreciate it so much. Thank you all for coming. I promise next week I'll be better with the reminders. 
<laughs> lesson learned, but I got to make sure I have a note to send those emails out. Um, but thanks again, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks, Brittany. See ya.